Well, what do you want to do? Do you want do you want to do your bit now while nobody's watching, or, do, or, or would you rather watch me play Park Gargoyle Quest uh, while my internet dies? I should go to bed in a few hours. Oh uh, yeah, but this isn't gonna take a few hours. This is gonna take like ten minutes. Assuming anybody shows up at any point here. If no one's watching, I'll continue playing Arcalos. That's fair enough. Absolutely need to do that. Because otherwise you can't reach this ledge. This game would be so cool if it was like an actual like open world. <laughs> what Steam Envy Indie Dev did it. This is Gargoyle Quest, Shrug. And Peng! Hey! Enough people are here that I don't feel like it's a total waste. Not that you're a total waste, uh, Happel. So should I get to the ranking stuff now, or...? Also, Peng and, uh, Sugary, are you gonna... Contribute anything? Just fried an egg? Nice, yeah. Fried eggs are awesome. I, almost every morning I fry two eggs and eat it. It's really godly. I honestly don't know of anything to contribute. I mean, I know you hid my thread, but but if you unhide it and take a look at the OP, I've got a whole list of all the games that I played this year with links to each post I made about them. And honestly, you don't need to have played the game in order to contribute. Lord of the Rings Online Expansion. How are you even playing Lord of the Rings Online? Did they re-release it? your thread who did somebody somebody like openly hid my thread like right after I uh, posted it I thought it was you
Unless that was just like a joke picture or something. Somebody posted this funny gif of uh, my thread and them going down to hide thread. Probably Balak Baldwin. It was dark sugary. Oh, okay. That bastard. That rat bastard. Oh, Trexy. Okay. I knew it was someone bad. <laughs> it should be made into a banner. Hold on. Phallic is texting me. But I've got to get through this platforming section first. hard game for a P. This was one of my favorite games as a kid um, on the Game Boy. Obviously not as good as uh, Metroid 2. But uh, one of the best games on the Game Boy. So what's the deal with the Warframe story? I mean, how epic is it? I stopped playing Warframe years ago, and uh, one of the reasons was, shit, hang on, Ooh. ah, okay, <laughs> one of the reasons was they added a whole bunch of shit, like uh, the operator stuff, which was, like, the the person inside of the Warframe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And, and I was, I, I, for whatever reason, I was under the impression that the whole point was that the frames were just sort of, like, interchangeable shells that you were possessing as, like, some sort of uh, parasite thing. Like, uh... Because of the tie-ins to, what was it, Dark, uh, whatever that game was called, Dark whatever, Dark Matter, I don't remember, but, uh, I thought that was a really cool gimmick for that sort of, like, thing where you, you, you're all using sort of interchangeable characters. Your operators are children, yeah. Anyway, and then all the recent stuff has just been, uh... Anyway, the 
warframes are bioengineered robots originally mutated from people. Yeah. Yeah, but the whole operators thing just bounced off of me. Anyway, uh, Haffle. Do you want to, uh, uh, ring me up on Steam Chat? And I'll drag you over. Oh, and Gumball's not showing up. We may as well start this. I don't know the best way to do this. <clears throat> the infested enemy types are specifically failed warframe experiments. Yeah, and then there's the the Orican stuff. The uh, I have to figure out how to actually use my microphone. Well, figure it out. Um, do you want to start with uh, Ertugul Ghazi or Hero's Spirit? I actually had to manually. Uh, throw together some clips for Hero Spirit because I didn't originally uh, clip it at all. Steam voice chat, I, I just right click on it and say talk to Haffle. Start voice chat. And then it immediately connects us. But I, I, I want you to be able to like quiet your dog and uh uh you know, tell your gimp to shut up or whatever you have to do before I send you the message. Looks like Windows does detect my microphone. Big win! But yeah, I haven't played Warframe in years. I booted it up a while back and logged into my old shit, but there was just so much, uh... So much, like, garbage missions between me, where I was, and me playing the new content. Like, any of the new content. So I just gave up on it entirely. Same thing with Vindictus. Vindictus I used to play a lot, and I logged into it to look at all my old stuff, and they now have like 30 fucking characters. And, and I'm sure it's not any better um, balanced or anything. Um, Vindictus was one of those games. Vindictus, I think, is one of the reasons why I got so into uh, Monster Hunter World, actually, because it's got a very similar... Um, it, it's got a similarly satisfying progression curve up to a certain point in Vindictus, and I guess a certain point in Monster Hunter, where, you, you know, you, you get to go explore new areas and fight new types of monsters and use bits from them to upgrade your stuff and look cooler. Um... And then on top of that, you also just get better at using your character, or in Monster Hunter's case, your weapon uh, type. And that's a really satisfying, like, twin progression curve, where there's the the grinding progression, and then there's also the, uh, uh, like, player progression. But then Vindictus, once they started doing the, like, open world areas... It just completely fell apart. It, it became, like, non-stop grind. Like, the end game was already miserable, um, but at least it was all just, like, one-off fights or uh, uh, mostly boss fights, like raids. But, uh, yeah, all the open world shit with, like, the different difficulty levels of the open world, but you, the only 
one that was any had any meaning to doing was the very final one but you couldn't even survive in the very final difficulty without grinding the earlier ones for ages and all of your shit that you ground from you know earlier raids or whatever was completely useless um so i was talking to car wash because he had just gotten uh through most of monster hunter world and he'd been talking it up and saying oh you need to check it out and i, I mentioned something to him about booting up my vindictus characters and looking at them and being like i don't actually want to play this anymore i wish there was something like more like the low level gameplay of this and he was like oh well, there you go that's monster hunter world so i finally picked it up and it was genuinely very similar What's up, Brosif? I'm waiting for Haffle to get ready. He's currently typing a message. I want to play Monster Hunter Rise on PC. Yeah, um... I am going to get Rise. I don't know if I'll have much time to play it around release because I'm also pre-ordering Elden Ring. Not because I want the pre-order bonuses or because of any of the pre-order stuff, but just because I know for a fact that I'm going to be playing it when it comes out. So I, I might as well just cut the bullshit and throw away my money right now instead of waiting until after the holidays when I will have less money. Um, to be throwing around. I'd, I'd rather just, like, earmark it for... I'm leaving the PC Master is. My brother got one. I've been playing uh, Demon Souls Remastered on it, and he also got Returnal, which I'm going to be playing. Uh, and on... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, as much as everyone was joking, and perfect timing, Aki, um... I kind of want to play that uh, Forspoken game with the uh, the black girl with sneakers uh, doing uh, uh, what is what is the War of the Ring or whatever the uh, Assassin's Creed Lord of the Rings game Forspoke Returnal is fine yeah that's kind of what I picked up from it from what little I've seen of it Forspoken. Ring, 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 ring. I have zero interest in Returnal, and it's still fifty nine ninety nine. So fuck off. Yeah, sixty bucks. I mean, I didn't buy it, but that's gonna be every game on PS Five too. <laughs> Demon shit for thirty dollars. Yeah, I've not been playing it online either. Halfel, oh, waiting on Halfel to connect. <clears throat> Demon Souls is a pretty good remake. It's a pretty good remake, and I have a lot of real nitpicks with it. Um, okay, I can't hear you, Haffel. Are you using, like, push to talk or something? Oh, I, ju I was just trying to test it. Oh, perfect. Perfect. I hear you when I... Yeah. Or, or... I muted the stream and I hear you, so I guess it's working. Oh, perfect, yes. Um, also, perfect that you have uh, an accent almost as bad as She Slops. Who is not here, by the way. Very di disappointing. So, Hero's Spirit. I guess we'll start with that, right? It's the game I want to talk about. Okay, well, and also uh, Ertigul Ghazi, which you have agreed to talk about. But Hero's Spirit. Which one of us found this game first? I don't remember. I think it was you, but it was uh, when I was still looking to the Steam new games, so we found it about the same time, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was probably just on one of those, like refreshes where both of us were checking our new releases uh recommendations and just sending each other things that we 
both hated. So what was it about it that made you want to play it? I just... It... I'm not sure, I think you you actually streamed it at some point and then I bought it. Oh, okay. I don't really remember that. Yeah, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense because I think I remember streaming it almost immediately after buying it. Because um, after like playing the first couple minutes and realizing what it actually was, I thought, okay, this is unique enough that I think people would like to see it. There was one other person that uh, picked it up and played it uh, after I initially posted about it in my thread. I can't remember who it was. I guess I can pull it up. But somebody played like two hours of it and got lost and couldn't find a save point and quit. Let's see. Heroes. I'm looking it up right now. Okay, T T Zop um, played it for about an hour and got completely lost, and also threw both of us into a panic when he mentioned a uh, a sand a desert area that neither of us had found. Yeah, and but it turned out to be the cherry blossom town, or was it the actual desert? No, it was the uh, the northern uh, shores where it was all gray. Oh, yeah. That... And, and yeah, he, because he, that's like, one of... he posted a picture of it and we were like, no, never mind. That's not right. Uh, that was, I think, the high point of the game when I don't think even the, the first version didn't have the er area names, I think. So we kind of had to figure out what to call each area and so on yeah yeah i mean i like the area names in the new version it definitely helps keep things straight but it's also like you said a little bit disappointing where you're not creating as much of the world as the player i guess yeah i think the high point of this game was that i got in early so it was before anyone knew anything about the game, so it was all just figuring things out and talking about it. Just look at, look at this thing I found and so on. Yeah, yeah, it was a real return to like... So as long as you have the stream unmuted, I can just talk to you. And you can uh, talk in chat and I'll uh, read your comment aloud. Although your your thick accent was very funny. But you were still more intelligible than she slob. So, I, I don't know if you heard me say it. I, I, now I'll say it a third time. Uh, it, it was fun going over it with you and playing it and being able to share like little secrets that we found like when you found the compass or whatever and i was like what the fuck you found a compass like where where you go oh you know go in the swamp find the secret cave isn't she slept british he's north british awful um but you you also said you thought it was because we uh we were early adopters of it. I don't think that's entirely true, because I don't think anyone's played this game besides the two of us. And I don't just mean on bad game. Yeah, all the secret Easter egg areas in GTA. <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know, did... Do, do you have, know something? Like, is there some secret cabal of people who, like, in, in Japan or in Eastern Europe who are obsessed with this game and are, like, sharing full maps or something? Because I was shocked 
<laughs> I lost Steam Chat in general. <laughs> oh. Is it just me? Am I just cursed? When the re release came, I found out there's a wiki. Is it like an actual completed wiki, or is it just like most wikis where it's like half assed and doesn't answer any of your actual questions? SA mods. SA mods play this? I knew there were a couple people on SA that were obsessed with tac uh, uh, tactical. Uh, it's mostly complete. That's interesting. Surprisingly big map. Did they map stuff like the secret uh, back entrance to the uh, castle and shit? Because that's the kind of stuff that I even burn out on doing. Because it's just a blind maze. <clears throat> there was a map of the secret castle entrance. Oh. Well, maybe I need to take a look at that. Since, yeah, it's a... Oh, it's a blind teleporter maze. Okay, well that explains a lot of shit. I knew it was a blind maze. I didn't realize there were teleporters in it. That explains how miserable it was. Um, this has been bothering me. Yeah, what's up? This is all footage from the, uh, the updated version, by the way. Thinking about making a thread, but it might be psychotic. Perfect, perfect. We've got a lot of psychos. <clears throat> Advertises disc. Oh fuck! Of course. Also, di always Discord. Was there a multiplayer shooter game where you could? Pick up random shell on the ground and use it as a weapon, like rebar and pipes. Yes! Uh, Mordhal. <laughs> that was Mordhal, buddy. Okay, so there might be more people playing Hero's Spirit than I thought could exist. Um, I think there were one or two people that eventually uh, picked this up on Bad Game, Duda's posting about it, but not many. And it's it's fair enough, because it's pretty niche. Um, I mean, even if you like, uh, what would you call these? Uh, not not Zevious. Uh, Highlight, I guess like a Highlight clone. Or highlight style game um, it's still pretty niche and uh, yeah even with the update like it's still pretty tough to start out with without any foreknowledge it's not challenging but it is pretty opaque I think that's more of a turnoff for a lot of people than challenging so like for example right here where I just walked through that mountain uh, the th the little spiral that leaves an indicator of where you walk through the mountain, that is not something that was in the original release of the game, and you need a power-up to uh, get it. Or no, you don't need a power-up to get it. They you always have that now, I guess. Determinative combat? I mean, you can run away from most of the enemies, but yeah... It's it's very binary, the combat. It's more than just determinative. Reaching the final boss fight was incredibly cool. Yeah, the final boss fight definitely carries a lot of the, uh, the surprise and uh, a lot of what I was really impressed with this game for. And I, I think the update was a good one, even though yes, it did rob some of the uh, some of the mystery. Uh, it did add more stuff to find. It added a little bit more secrets to deal with. 
I, I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't play the New Game Plus without uh, any before the update. Because I think that would have been a little bit more interesting. But... I enjoyed uh, Hero's Spirit. I don't know if I would put it at the top of my games of the year. But, right now... What's up, Excalibur? Right now, our number one game is Smashing Spirits, Brazil's first boxer. And then right out under that is Dragon Quest. And I would absolutely put Hero's Spirit above Dragon's Quest. I mean... Graphically, it's very similar, although it lacks the uh, the character of the monster designs from Dragon's Quest. But it's a as opaque and as tedious as it can be, you don't have to grind. You don't have to do anything repeatedly. Except for attempting a blind teleporter maze. But you don't have to do that to finish the game. It's actually very easy to finish this game without even finding, like... A, you can do it without even finding more than like 20% of the content. It's at the top, but that's partially because I got into it at the right time. Yeah, I don't know how it would be for people now, especially most people who would immediately like just go look up where to find stuff. Um, I think that could kill a lot of it, especially if you can see a map, because as you might be able to tell from the clips, part of the gimmick is that uh, it is like a tile-based um, sort of NES Dragon Warrior overworld that you're exploring, but you have line of sight, so you can't just see like on the other side of a thing of mountains, which is how a lot of shit is hidden and how the maps are kind of obfuscated. So you would put it at the top. You would put it above Smashing Spirits, Brazil's first boxer. Now, I, <laughs> I'm i going to agree with you. It's tough putting anything above Smashing Spirits. But I think it's fair enough for Hero's Spirit. So Hero's Spirit is currently the best game. The maps are big enough to be confusing when trying to look at them. I mean, no, I, I've i explored this map thoroughly enough that just from a glance, I recognize all of these, uh, all of these points of interest. I do think it's interesting that there are parts of the map that are literally, like, never going to be visible because you cannot, uh, go out into the water into some of these places. What pool of games are you considering? Um, if you go to the OP of my Games Played thread for this year, I'm rating all of the games that I have finished and written a post about this year. So that's not including any games that I've played for any amount of time, even if it's very long and not finished or not written a thing about. And it's not including... Uh, uh, some games that I've replayed but not had anything to say, anything new to say about. I can't make out the text in the spreadsheet. Did you end up playing Vomitorium? I did not, no. It was Vomitorium the free one or the one that was like 10 bucks that the guy put out? Because I know what you're talking about, but I don't, I can't keep his game straight. I know I played Shrine 2 or Shrine 3, yeah. Uh, and that one was okay. Um, but I, yeah, I'm not including games that I played and finished again. Like, uh, I played a shitload of Neo 2, but I, I already said basically all I could possibly say about it last year. And, uh, or maybe the year before, I don't remember. It's 10 bucks. Yeah, I might pick it up this winter, during the, the Christmas sale or something like that. I'm going to try one of the fa Final Fantasy IX HD upscale mods. Uh, I downloaded, what's the other one, Lycanthropy or whatever, the Castlevania uh, GZ Doom one. Uh, and played through a little bit of it. 
I played through some other Castlevania GZ Doom uh, game a long, long time ago on stream, but I don't know if it was the same guy. Uh, but yeah, Neo 2 I'm not including, and uh, same with Sekiro, which I, I played to death on PC this year, and also played a randomizer, but I, I don't have much to say about the randomizer. I, it's a lot of fun, but there's nothing really more to say about it. I played it, it's okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I was, the vibe I was getting from playing Lycanthorn. Anything is going to be more fun than uh, Final Fantasy VI Beyond Chaos run. I've been thinking about doing some more randomizer runs for stuff. But I don't know really what to play. Alright, so while Haffle's here... Um, I need to pick his brain about another excellent game. Ertugul Ghazi. Ertugul Ghazi is about the Turkish uh, national hero who was the father or grandfather of the founder of the Ottoman Empire. Um, Pole the... Uh, Mario 64 <laughs> No, I'm not that insane. Uh, anyway... Air to Golgazi. Uh, it looks like a phone game. Uh, the interface looks like a phone game's interface. Each time you beat a mission, you get a certain amount of gold with which you can buy upgrades. Um, including one upgrade is just a wolf companion. It was a phone game originally. Looks pretty good for a phone game. I would be impressed with this on a phone. There's the wolf companion. And you play as this guy, he wears like a weird set of coveralls, uh, like form-fitted coveralls. He's got a bunch of dudes in beanies who follow him around, and all the missions are so bad. Um, mostly you just walk along a dirt road for like, no shit, like 10 minutes. Uh, you shoot some Romans, like Roman legionnaires in the head. You've got unlimited arrows, but that doesn't matter because uh, enemy health scales so wildly that eventually it takes like 20 arrows to kill a single guy. Um, I loved it. It, it was amazing. Uh, it was honestly pretty impressive for a phone game. Uh, but I will never touch it again. I probably... I was somewhat considering playing the uh the sequel or prequel more arcadey mountain blade that's kind of what it is except uh more arcadey and uh very very tedious and yes i did on my own time go back and grind all the gold by repeating uh very short missions in order to uh max out all my upgrades um which is how i'm beating this final boss here who is a like weird anime vampire guy in a set of suit of plate armor wo yao da but less silly yeah yeah it's wo yao da but with genuine national nationalistic pride instead of uh extremely hilarious feigned nationalistic pride. Wo Yao Da was uh, amazing. It was not good in any way, but it was amazing. And I, I really loved playing through it. Again, I'm probably never going to touch it again. But uh, I'm glad it exists. Mostly for the, uh, the, the face, which is currently an emote. Uh, I don't have a... Oh, in, in chat only, I can't bring up a list of the emotes. Oh, here it is. A vampire in plate armor must be the Pope. I was just talking to my brother about that. The, the fact that, uh, yeah, there it is. Woo, yeah, duh. 
uh, the fact that uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood ends with you fist fighting the Pope. Pretty awesome. Alright, so Ertigal Ghazi, Halfel, what do you have to say about this? Because you know more about it than I do, probably. Or at least you knew that there was a sequel. I didn't even watch your full stream, <laughs> and I regret that. Yeah. One thing I, I remember distinctly was the throat singing in some of the, uh, uh, like the, the main menu music had awesome throat singing, and the start of every mission had uh, awesome throat singing, but uh, it cuts off after like a couple seconds, and then there's no music for the rest of the game. Or for the rest of the mission. Of which you only play a few. I've played a bunch of games that you've recommended to me. Hang on, let me let me go through here. Um Lost Ruins. I've just started playing that. That is the Momodora but illegal. Um, Hrot, Hrot, you, you, you wanted me to play that, I think. Uh, Leggy, which is by the Hrot devs, which I haven't even started yet, but I did buy it. Uh... uh <laughs> Uh, Warhammer 2, you're the one that's always trying to get me to play Warhammer 2, right? Car Wash isn't here to say otherwise, right? Tactical Nexus. Proteus has multiplayer now? Really? Like, multiplayer multiplayer? Like, deathmatch? Or is it, like, co-op? You play about 5% of games I recommend, which is fair because a lot of them are crap. Four-player co-op. I don't know if I want to play four-player co-op in Proteus. I didn't play that much of it originally. All right, Haffle. Where would you put uh, Ertugul Ghazi? Let me uh, expand this. So this is the current uh, rating. Yeah, Heroes, Spirit, Smashing Spirits. Wow, a lot of spirits. Dragon Quest. Crown Trick, Grime, Breath Edge, Control Override, Vetrix, and Neosense. I'm absolutely not putting this below Neosense. <clears throat> below Crown Trick, which is the highest rated <laughs> game on the list I played. Is this better than Grime? Huh. At least below Crown Trick. Your reasoning is fairer, but now that that leaves me with a pretty big gap here. I don't think it's better than Grime. I don't think it's better than Breath Edge, because although Breath Edge takes a big dive in quality, um, Ertugul Ghazi is already below that in quality, and a lot of its middle game drags too like the, there's a lot of missions where you just walk along this dirt road completely feature this dirt road and it goes nowhere and you have to kill like a hundred guys <laughs> is grime the metroidvania with the gay rock man yes yes it is uh and breath edge is the uh um subnautica in space with russian humor I looked it up on Steam and looks gay. Oh, you mean Grime? Grime is okay if you like Metroidvanias. It's not great. It's definitely not the best Metroidvania even released this year. Um, but it's got some good qualities. I liked uh, I liked the combat and the boss fights. Yeah, that's fair enough. It's, it's probably not worth getting to the boss fights uh, if you didn't like the intro area. 
I used to like Metroid likes a lot more. Well, there there used to be a higher uh, ratio of playable Metroid likes to complete garbage. I, I yeah, I think it's mostly oversaturation and specifically oversaturation of like just really bland or really really dog shit stuff, like out buddies. Um, I mean, they, they, there's a ton of them. Last one I played that I enjoyed was Bloodstain. Bloodstain's okay. That's another one that I've recently played back through, but have nothing new to say about it. Because um, I basically just played the uh, the hard mode, the hard difficulty. Not the insane difficulty, but the hard difficulty. It, and it's... I don't know. It, it, it It's okay. It's cool it has an official randomizer speedrun mode. That's kind of cool, but the I've played through the randomizer, and the randomizer is just kind of bland as far as randomized uh, Metroidvanias go. The best Metroidvania I played this year is Lost Ruins. Lost Ruins didn't really strike me as much of a Metroidvania, honestly. I'm going to put this below Control Override. Um, but above Vetrix. I, I had some fun playing Vetrix, but it's a VR-only game, and even then, like, I had some fun with it, but I, I don't think I'm, I'm ever gonna boot it up again. Uh, while as this, where, whereas this, I might boot it up, like, as a laugh, or to show somebody that this is a real thing. So, Ertugul Ghazi is the new number eight. Best Metroidvania. Is Lobotomy Core any good? I've not played Lobotomy Core. I've not even seen it. I've only heard the name of it. All right. Do any of you want to uh, call dibs on any of these games that you want to have any input on the rating of and again you can look at the full list on uh, my op somebody was talking about the uh, dark souls games does anybody remember who that was his last uh last time i streamed can you guys hear the christmas music by the way I hear the music. Okay, I just turned it up, so. I'm, I'm trying to guilt the uh, car wash into coming to help rank Salt and Sanctuary. I don't think he will, though. He probably doesn't want to get on mic. doesn't voice their opinion a coward true true I don't think I can rank anything unless I play at least 50% of what's on the list which I probably haven't oh he's reaching he's reaching for an excuse to not do this Alright, 
what what is something that absolutely no one would have any opinion on? I guess I'll do K's in the Wild Masks. Since only FYB that I know of has played this. And he, he did not like it. Oh, or he liked it, but uh, had pretty valid complaints about it. You need to get FYB in voice chat. I, I seriously doubt that I would be able to do that. I, I'm uh, pretty impressive and have a lot of pull. Yeah, he's not even on Steam right now. <clears throat> I watched DSP play it. Really? I'm kind of surprised DSP played this. What was DSP's opinion of it? I will defer, obviously, to the king of hate. Honestly, I kind of liked it. Um, I liked it better than uh, its obvious direct uh, equivalent or inspiration, which is Donkey Kong Country. I was thinking of Kena and the Bridge of Spirits. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I never really liked the Donkey Kong Country games. Mostly because they are too difficult. Like, they, they're just very frustrating to play through. I haven't played Kina, so I'm, I'm not sure. Alright. Anyway, it, you know, this obviously has draws a lot of inspiration from Donkey Kong Country. It's much easier, uh, which I think is probably for the best. Unless you're a hardcore platformer fan. But, uh, I found this enjoyable to, like, play through and then also to go back through and try and get collection. There were only a handful of levels that were really big difficulty spikes, and even then they weren't that bad. Um, but FYB said that he had a lot of problems with the, uh, the auto runner sections. Which I didn't find to be that difficult, but I can see why it would be similar to the uh, like the minecart sections of Donkey Kong Country. It also reminded me a lot of the new Rayman games, if any of you have played those. Um, but there's not a whole lot going on. Like it's fun, but it's not great, and. Uh, some of the boss fights are kind of frustrating. So... <clears throat> Let's see, K's in the wild mess. Where would I put this here? I don't think I'd put it above Crown Trick. This looks like Aladdin SNES. I think it's even easier than Aladdin. I don't know if I would put it above Grime, because Grime, although it's 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 not something I would generally recommend to anyone, um, if you are really into that style of like Metroid likes, uh, with you know, melee combat or whatever, I'd say, you know, you might you might be able to crack the nut on Grime and get into like the fun boss fights and stuff like that. That might be worth it. Uh, with this, you'd have to be basically like me, a elderly, infirm uh, person who could never get into platformers because they were too difficult. H3VR, dare me to drive. Which game has the, uh, the, the, uh, better modding scene? H3VR or, uh, Blade and Sorcery? 
Now keep in mind, Blade and Sorcery has uh, uh, C4 satchel charges you can put on women's faces. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think, despite this being much more polished than uh, Grime, and probably a much more consistent and enjoyable playthrough, I think there's less to draw you in in this. Because everything that's been done here has been done as many times as there are Donkey Kong Country games and uh, Donkey Kong Country uh, knockoff games. So I, I do want to put it below Grime for that reason. And maybe the same for Breath Edge. Although Breath Edge, I think, still has a big hurdle with the fact that the, the last half of it really just sucks. So, I don't know. I'm kind of torn about where I, I would put it. I would definitely put it above Control Override because Control Override is just not much of a game. Has the more autistic modding scene. BNS probably has a better one for sandboxing, killing, kill women. Yeah, that's fair enough. Not not enough of blade and sorcery mods are really really in depth and uh, neurotic. I switched my VPN to France. Oh, okay. <laughs> It might also just be my connection. I think my connection was probably what was killing us there. Now, you know what? Just just on a personal level, I like Breath Edge better for having actual jokes. So I'm going to put it below Breath Edge. Oops. Hey, K's in the wild mass, or Kaze in the wild mass, I have no idea. <clears throat> Alright, anybody gonna volunteer? Any of these games at all interesting? Haffle, do you have anything to say about Ender Lilies? Jokes better than furry bait? Yeah. Well, especially because I was so surprised that uh, the, the jokes were good enough to survive the translation from... Uh... ...from Russian. wrote about Ender Lilies twice in the game's play thread. I think I said all I can. Well, then I guess I'll, I'll deal with it. There was somebody else uh, in my thread, or no, in the game's play thread. Who was it? Was it Justinian that uh, got really into Ender Lilies? The stream is still very choppy. Uh, it looks like it's, uh... No, it, it's starting to get choppy again, for sure. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's... It drops down to 1,400 kilobits per second, and then goes back up. There's definitely... I wonder if it's like some kind of interference.
Yeah, it's definitely turd. Because I'm getting 20 megabits per second upload. Oh, it looks like it's recovered now. <clears throat> oh shit, I forgot to close this and reopen this. But I don't think Justinian is going to watch my stream, uh, much less come in here and get on mic. So I guess I'll take care of this now. Uh, Ender Lilies, a much, much better uh, Metroidvania than Grime. In basically every way. It's got much better uh, combat and abilities. You, you use them a lot, even though they're all, except for a couple of the melee attacks, they're all uh, limited use per rest. Um, it's got good boss fights, maybe not as good as uh, Grime, uh, but I, I definitely still like the boss fights in this. And the art and music and sound design are all just the leagues better than grime I mean just just having 2d sprites with actual like design instead of that garbage 2.5d 3d art that everyone uses now because it's cheap and easy uh, yeah don't do that do actual animations like, yeah, some of the animations look kind of bad, but not many of them. That's a cool thing. I like that the enemies have fall damage, too. Well, the enemies have fall damage. You don't. At least I don't think so. I can't remember. Do you have any fall damage? I, I didn't think so. But yeah. Easily better than Grime. Uh, I would definitely recommend it to anyone who likes this type of game at all. Um, not the best of these that I've played. It, it definitely has some issues. I, I wouldn't say it's quite as good as Hollow Knight, although I like the art a little bit better than Hollow Knight, honestly. I. Uh, it doesn't have nearly as much content as Hollow Knight, and although I do complain about the amount of content in Hollow Knight a lot, uh, it, it does still add value to the game. Alright, later, later, Excal. But, I mean, as far as uh, these types of games go, it, it's a pretty high bar. I like it better than Crown Trick, and I'll definitely replay it, which I won't do with Crown Trick. I'll definitely replay Dragon Quest 2, or as well. Um, but is it better? I think so. You don't have to grind in this. That's one nice thing about this, is that although it has levels, the levels are basically meaningless. Um, you just kind of accumulate them. Oh shit. But is it better than Smashing Spirits? Honestly, I think Smashing Spirits is less of a uh, commitment, and I think it has more of a chance to surprise somebody. I think if you see Ender Lilies and you have at all any twinge of wanting to play it, you've probably already bought it and played it. Um, Smashing Spirits, I think, uh, still has more going on. And then also Hero's Spirit uh, is more unique. So that's where I'm going to put that. Ender Lilies is number three. <clears throat> now, should I just pull a quick one and do all the Mega Mans together? <laughs> uh, 
let's see. I don't think anyone's going to talk about... I can talk about DQ2. Dragon Quest 2? So I didn't play that this year. I played through some of it on my phone. Uh, let's do the Room VR. Dark Matter. Oops. I, I keep forgetting I need to close it and reopen it to keep it from overlapping the... I liked Ender Lilies a lot, but I won't play it again unless there's a content DLC. Yeah! I mean, they did do that update, but the update wasn't big enough, I don't think, to really pull me back into it. Um, it, it and it was it's fun enough to play through, but not interesting enough that I would want to, uh, like, try speedrunning it or doing multiple playthroughs. Uh, like I did for, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Momodora. So this is a VR only game, which automatically uh, kind of bumps it down a notch. Nobody's going to get a headset for this game. Uh, and honestly, it's not even good if you have a headset already. It's, it's okay. It's, it's a puzzle thing. And there's a little bit of tactile stuff going on. Um, but for as much as they could have done with it being a VR game, they honestly didn't do it nearly enough. I was pretty disappointed in it, because I thought, you know, the, the room games are mostly just excuses for you to do, like, tactile uh, music box or puzzle box stuff. But, uh, this did not capitalize on that. I, I did like the fact that you could play it one-handed, basically. Like, every interaction is possible with one hand, instead of having to hand over hand anything. Um, but that doesn't make up for the fact that it's all basically just the same, you know, go from room to room pick up anything that's like slightly shiny and rub it against everything that isn't. Uh, and it was kind of short, which was disappointing. So... <clears throat> VR. I, I would not put it over Control Override. I don't know if I would put it over Air to Gulgazi. Honestly, this is probably a worse VR game to pick up on a whim than v Vetrix, but not nearly as bad as Neosense. This one's a pretty easy one to rank right now, because Vetrix is right there. And I misspoke when I said Vetrix was the first VR game that I purchased, because uh, clearly this was. And it was such a big disappointment, I forgot about it. Um, next one I'm going to do, then, is uh, Cathedral. This cathedral is a similar disappointment. So I remember distinctly how I opened my post about Cathedral. I said, Cathedral's okay. And that's still basically all I have to say about it. It's it's sort of like a Wonder Boy uh, structured game, like Wonder Boy and Monster World or something like that. Um, and it's all very functional, and it it's fine, but it just drags on a little too long in each area, and. There's not enough, uh, 
there's just not enough actual character to it. Like, it's got some character, it's got some good art, but there's... I don't know. No, nothing clicked with me. And I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Uh, although, I, I'm remembering now seeing this, the, the boss fights were a huge uh, difficulty spike. Um, to the point where they were actually kind of fun to... Uh, get through so that might be a uh, something that makes them worth or something that makes it kind of worth uh, checking out but yeah everything else is it's just all been done before like I don't remember anything that was really uniquely cathedral to this <laughs> uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Loco Melito did that one, uh, I think it was like a ZX Spectrum, uh, game that was based on, like, a, a novel about a, a heretical monk or something. Am I misremembering that? Oh, he's come out with a couple new ones. Uh, Solar Gladiators and Mutants from the Deep. I, I have not played either of these. Oh, Mutants from the Deep looks awesome. Solar Gladiators is... Is this a... It's an arena shooter. Not great. Um... La Abbe de Mortes. In the 13th century, the Cathars, clerics who preached about the poverty of Christ and defended life without material aspirations, were treated as heretics by the Catholic Church and expelled out of the Long Languedoc region in France. One of them, Jean, Jean Raymond, found an old church in which to hide from crusaders. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, ZX Spectrum. And apparently he man uh, somebody actually put it on uh, cassette. So you could play it on your real ZX Spectrum. Kind of cute. Um, Cathedral is not that interesting, unfortunately. It's a shame. It's got a lot of... Uh, it's got a lot of things that should be interesting. You get a gun as a weapon, uh, very similar to uh, La Mulana, except uh, it's a little too easy to come by bullets for it. Like, it's supposed to be very difficult to come by bullets for it, but it winds up not being that hard. Now, Cathedral... I would not recommend Cathedral to anyone, but I also wouldn't recommend too strongly against it. Like, if you see it and you think, oh, I really want to play another Monster uh, Wonder Boy game, probably wouldn't be too bad. Um, and I would say, yeah, go ahead. It's It, it drags on a little bit, but you might, you might like it better than I did. Um, I don't know if it's better or worse than K's in the Wild Mass, though. I want to say it's just a little below K's in the Wild Mass, or maybe it's just above K's in the Wild Mass. Because this does at least have some challenge where K's, like, yeah, part of what I liked about it was that it didn't have much challenge. But that also made it a little more forgettable. This, I do at least remember that the bosses were very uh, tough. Um, but I like Breath Edge's humor. 
Breath Edge had some humor, which gave it some character, which Cathedral does not really have, unfortunately. But it's okay. I, I wouldn't recommend against it. Uh, I'm gonna run piss. I'll be right back. I don't recognize 90% of those 14 picks. I mean, I've mostly been doing the games that I don't think anyone wants to talk about so far. Um, so I've been avoiding any of the ones that you probably might have seen. Uh, but if there are any games uh, in my list, my larger list that you are interested in, and you want to get on voice chat or just chat chat, uh, we can do those now. Uh, otherwise, I'll have to pick another one that I don't think anyone wants to talk about. And my throat's drying out. I guess I'll do, uh, I expect you to die. That's probably not one anyone else has really played. I trust your decisions and would rather read about games I don't know about. I see. It's time to finish Nox Arceus. <laughs> Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. Did you want to talk about that one, Pang, or did you just want me to go ahead and do it next? Also, yeah, Nox Arceus. Halfle, are you going to finish that one, or are you just telling me to? Because I kind of burn out on it. Which voice chat? I was just going to do Steam voice chat if it's working now. You can think about it. I'm going to talk about uh, I Expect You to Die. I Expect You to Die is pretty cute for a VR game. It's definitely better than the uh, the other VR games that I've talked about so far. Um, but it's just kind of slim on actual content. It's kind of like a puzzle game more than anything else. And unfortunately, once you know the solutions, or at least a solution to each puzzle, the, the only other things are either trying to find alternate solutions, which can be kind of tedious. Wow, my delay is awful. Um, hang on, I might have to restart the stream since I've lagged out a bunch. Give me a second. 